Hello, my name is Mark, uh, for those of you who do not know me. And right now it's approximately 8 o'clock in the morning. And uh, today I thought I'm going to talk to you about uh, fixed income investment strategies. And not only fixed income, but we will talk about just uh, quite a few main uh, strategies for investment. I will tell you my opinion about each one of them, each one I'm using. Uh, you probably had the chance to look at my portfolios. I have just a few of them and you already know which strategy I'm using with each of them. But today let's talk about uh, the, the first common strategy for investment is uh, dividend investment. Uh, it, this is when people uh, would invest in a, usually in a blue chip companies. Uh, in the stocks that have a history of paying out the dividends, but uh, th those company will those companies will be let, let me give you an example like Johnson and Johnson, Coca Cola, Pepsi Cola. Uh, there, there are just a few. There are so many of them uh, that you can choose from, especially in the U.S. stock market. And uh, each company would pay you a dividend. But uh, usually it's like around two, three percent, and um, they have the monthly dividends pay, pay payments. They can, you know, and uh, here is a problem with this dividend investment strategy that I tried to implement earlier in my days. Uh, the the problem with each company's dividend yield is usually it's very low. Usually it's around two or three percent. And let's assume that you don't have much money to invest. You invest in uh, $50 or $100 per month. Well, you're basically going to get gains. You need to wait a long time before the compounding interest will kick in. And assuming you're a young person, then it will take you maybe 20, 30, 40 years of continuous investment. Until you actually say, well, this stuff is really working. I'm getting all this wealth in the form of the dividends and their appreciation and everything else. But it takes a long time because each tax pays a dividend of around 2 or 3%, as I mentioned before. So it's not going to be much, even if you continue to invest. Uh, I'm not saying this strategy is, is, is just bad, especially if a person is a young person, has so many years on his side and he's going to continue to invest then this strategy is really good because you're investing in uh, you're making the investment in, in the blue chip companies and you're getting the yield right now maybe it's a small yield but nevertheless it's, 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 it is a dividend uh as i spoke to the young people like we will communicate that just a few of them would uh, make a comment even earlier uh people get even the young people get really you know to discouraged after a while why well because each company is giving you a small yield it's, it's very small it's only two three percent and after a while you're looking at your results you say gee here i'm making one dollar or two dollars per month i'm not motivated i'm not motivated to continue this in this dividend in investment uh I'm, I'm not motivated to continue implementing the strategy, which is a dividend investing. Why? Because I'm not getting much. I'm not getting much return. And uh, I totally understand it. You know, it takes it takes a long time. Uh, no matter if a person is young, middle aged, old, or elderly, or whatever, it takes it takes a long time to acquire wealth with this strategy. Even though this strategy is really good in my opinion. Uh, the second strategy is not uh, basically a fixed income strategy, but it's a growth uh, strategy. It's it's when the investor depends on capital appreciation of the stock uh, to make some money, assuming that he will sell this stock that that, that he is planning to invest in in the first place. Um, in my portfolio, you probably seen that I have two funds that I consider to be growth. It's RK, 
and RKW. It's from the ARK Invest. You can look at their funds. Uh, the, the first fund is basically close to funds focus on technology and uh, technology stocks such as uh, Tesla and um, a middle cap companies um, and I tell you I was really excited with this strategy because I, I was going to double my portfolio or triple my portfolio in uh, a very short period of time so I said so I said to myself if I'm going to invest in ARK maybe in about a year or so instead of ten thousand dollars I will have twenty thousand dollars or, or uh, you know instead of twenty thousand dollars I will have forty thousand dollars and I would get excited uh, I, I would see my portfolio my ARK portfolio would get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger till one day we had a correction you know and then I'm looking at my portfolio and I'm seeing Gee, it showed me um, an unrealized loss of 30%, 20%. Oh my goodness, I, I, it seems like over one day, all my unrealized uh, profits were basically, uh, you know, just like wiped out. I mean, I no longer have them. I'm looking at I'm, I'm in, I'm in red. And... Uh, with this, does, with this type of investing, you can still get a fixed income in the form of the dividend, even though most growth stocks do not pay any the dividends. But this is going to be smaller. You depend on the capital appreciation. You're assuming then uh, when you're going to make some profits, only when the capital appreciation will go up, unless you decide to hold this stock indefinitely. And I was really excited and people would, would tell me, would write to me and say that they have invested in the ARK funds and this is what we have now. And, uh, you know, I would get discouraged as well when I'm looking at uh, my ARK portfolio and see, you know, my goodness, the things do not change much. My, my funds are staying in, in, you know, in you know, the red zone continuously. And it's been like this for about a year or so now. And the third approach, uh, which is not, many people are not very familiar with this approach to, to investing, would be investing in a, in a high income so ETFs or funds or stocks, high income. Uh, usually high income funds would come in the form when you're looking at the closed end uh, funds that are being actively managed. I, I know that in the US market, we have so many of them. Just unbelievable. I mean, you can go through each one of them and most of them would give you the dividend yield of seven percent or above that there are some funds that go up to even to you know like 10 11 12 percent uh, those funds would be not only the closest funds but it would be option trading etfs uh, as you know i'm heavily investing in a q yld r r yld as uh, soon i will invest in x while while LD and so so forth because they do yield to give you a very decent uh, dividend yield. Uh, you can look at the business uh, development corporations uh, REITs. Uh, some of them REITs would yield, especially the mortgage uh, REITs would yield approximately 10, 11 percent in the dividend yield. Uh, you can look at the business development uh, the companies and uh, they do uh, produce a very good yield uh, with these funds I like it because it doesn't take as much uh, to get the cash flow it doesn't take too much time uh, even when you invest a small amount of money and you get the dividend yield of 10-11% you're still going to get something in return that you're going to feel <coughs> excuse me uh, there is still going to be a good return uh, you need to watch for a few things. Usually those funds before in the past were used by people who are either in the retirement, so they use those funds to live on, or who are near retirement, so they need to save as much of these funds as possible. They need to save money in these funds as much as possible, so they will, those funds will produce a good dividend yield for them. And uh, right now people are looking at these funds uh, for the supplemental income. Uh, unfortunately, because of the situation, it's like in my in my situation, I lost income. I lost a lot of income during the crisis, 
and uh, I'm looking for the supplemental income. So I'm looking at those high income funds. Um, also, uh, you need to look at that, uh, you know, your taxation. Uh, those funds um, can give you problems down the road if you're not retired. So, you know, taxation for these funds can be really, really high, like especially with REITs. Uh, you'll be paying taxes uh, and they're going to be taxes uh, as an ordinary income. And uh, you need to look because uh, sometimes uh, you, you get a dividend yield in the form of the return of the capital. Uh, capital gains, long-term capital gains, short-term capital gains income interest so it could be in combination of things that are going to be considered when it's time for you to pay your taxes so you need to make sure you need to be aware of it because otherwise down the road you need to pay high, very high tax bill another thing when you're looking at all of those companies uh you need to you need to consider uh, the, you know you know this fact that sometimes uh, the dividend yield is not of you know you know what it seems. There are many dividend high yield dividend uh, high dividend yield uh, uh, people who chase high dividend the yield out, out of there. High dividend yield to chasers. That's what I call them, and I would say I'm I'm just like one of them too, you know. But. Uh, you need to understand that sometimes companies will pay you a high dividend yield uh, because uh, the, there are some problems within the companies. They try to attract the investors. Uh, the financial situation is bad. So in order to attract the high income investors, uh, they will try to offer a very nice dividend yield. Or the dividend yield comes uh, from the fact that they're losing uh, the share price to value. Uh, they comes directly from the reduction of the share price, uh, which is not that good over the long term. If you if you look at it, it's, it's not it's not really good. So I would say you need to evaluate each company, each fund very very carefully when this fund offers a high dividend yield. Why? Because it can be again a uh, high yield trap. Uh, because they try to attract as many investors as possible, uh, losing the share value, the, the, the financial situation is bad within the company. So, you know, that there can be many, many, many reasons. Uh, generally, I would say if uh, some company would yield 2 3%, I would consider it to be relatively safe. If uh, it goes uh, above like 7, 6, even 5, you need to, you need to start doing a lot of the homework. In terms of the due diligence because you never know then when you go to around 10 percent 11 12 uh, i see some companies a dividend yield much as like 16 percent 16 15 percent and that's that's really high so you need to understand why you need to ask yourself why did this company pay such a high dividend yield that's because i think are going too well extremely well or the things are going really, really bad and they're not do doing everything correctly. So they're offering you to invest in their company. And uh, again, um, right now, uh, which approach is you know, you know the right one? Well, it, it depends on your financial situation. I cannot tell you what to do again. I'm not a financial advisor. It depends if you have... Uh, Many, many years where you can accumulate wealth, you're very young, you're 20. Maybe growth of the dividends and yes, it would be, would be good. But if you need the supplemental income, you need the cash flow uh, for various reasons, not even because you're retired or near retirement or you need a supplemental. Now you have a job, now you have a part time job or something. You need something that is going to produce a cash flow. Maybe high income funds uh, would be something to consider. Again, you know, your know, taxation is a big deal when it comes to high income funds. So you need to understand how each fund is being, you know, is being, uh, is being, uh, is being taxed. Uh, and usually even the taxation uh, from one month to another is going to change. 
And right now I'm looking, I'm investing in the option trading ETFs. Uh, one ETF, as you know, QYLD produces 12% of dividend. Almost 12, almost 12%. RYLD is another ETF that I added, option trading ETF. Again, it's producing close to 12%. I'm looking at the closed end funds to invest since I need to you know, diversify my portfolio as much as possible. And as you know, I have ARC funds, I have private REITs, I, I invested in the total stock market, I invested in the total uh, to bond market. So I want all my assets to be, you know, you know I don't want all my assets to be put in one place. I want to have a diversification as much as possible. So, uh, so I would not risk as much money I can't risk, you know. But uh, this is what I want to talk to you about. It's up to you to decide, but I'm just saying that high income approach to investing, it's one of the, it's one approach that many people do not really know about, that they don't have really a lot of information. A dividend investing and growth investing seem to be very popular. And for the right reasons, I tell you. Uh, but uh, even when people use those approaches, whether it is a growth or dividend investing, I see them, uh, they get, the, the, they lose their you know, motivation, they get the, the discouraged uh, very soon because uh, they look, they put so much effort, uh, they're not investing a lot, but they're doing it consistently and they still have a very small amount of money that produces a very small dividend yield. So on, on that note, it's up to you, you need to um, analyze a different approaches so maybe use a combination of them to decide what is right for you on that note i wish you to have a nice uh day and if you have not subscribed to my channel please do so right now i really appreciate it and have a nice like, hit on that notification bell button so next time i will post a video you're going to be the one who's going to be notified about it and thank you so much bye now